Paddy! Stop asking me that question, Tom. We got asked that quite a few times, but I think it's that's for Harry to decide. I think he's very mature while he's doing it. Like, obviously, he's got a lot of pressure on me and Luke, and he's not just going to compete because me and Luke are competing. And I don't want that with you know family members, kids. If we have kids or stuff, it's just it's up to them. They they decide their own path and they do it. Uh, we I never I, do, I never want to force anybody. Harry's enjoying the gym, and I, and he's he's loving lifting weights, and he did it for his mental health more than anything else. So. If he wants to compete, it's up to him. But, you know, I mean, everybody knows he's capable of. Look at the Denny Stone thing, for example. Was it, was it Denny Stone? Denny, or Denny, yeah. Denny Stone left. And he was playing up to the crowd and stuff. So, yeah, in Harry's head, he'll know when he's ready. And I think we just leave him to ride the wave. And when he comes to us and says, I want to compete, we'll support him all the way. Definitely. Just what Tom says. Wow, F G-Wagon. Let's go, baby. G-Wagon, boy. Everybody knows that my dream car G wagon, man. I just said that pitch, like five times. Picture myself. What was it again? What did you say? Uh, the Ford Focus. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> no, because I'm 38 as well, and I'm still starting strong, man. Get it done, big Wayne. Yes. No. We would like to. I wouldn't. Tom just wants to do the house and not do anything else. This is funny, this is. Um, so Tom wants to put a strongman show on in his house once it's all done. Yeah. So it'll be, you watch TV and you vote who's the best strongman on the TV. And you win a prize. <laughs> but no, serious, yeah. We wanted to do it. I mean, we used to have something called the Inver Garden Highland Games here. Obviously we do the Inverness Highland Games that you guys probably have seen on YouTube and do it too. We want to basically take that to what it used to be in Invergordon, it used to be a big field in Invergordon, we did that and that was Invergordon's kind of biggest thing of the year, that's what we used to always be excited for as kids, seeing you know, all the, the athletics, the, strut, the Highland Games, every, all the shows, so we basically want to do that, but on a strong man and Highland Games skills and bring it to the Highlands, so it will come in the future, but we're not going to say how close in the future it's going to come, but it will come. We'll get it sorted for you guys, 100% it'll happen. Fans should always come first at every single competition you do and there should always be a live stream for fans to get access to if they can't afford to be going to competition. Because obviously, I mean, going to World Strongest Man, for example, that's, nobody can just put thousands of pounds from their back pocket and pay for it. I think every competition you should be doing, you should be able to have access to it live and that's just my honest opinion. So like, live streams and every single comp should be, should be there 100%. That's a good answer. I'll always be going for the 230 kilo log record um, until I get it. So, um, obviously Tom's very confident that I won't get it. I'll get 231 uh, and he'll go 232. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to go for it. Um, Show us now. Whether or not that it'll happen this year, I don't know. My, I don't know if people have been watching, I've had some issues with the shoulder and stuff over the last year or so, trying to get that rectified. But yeah, it will happen. I still feel good for it. Um, so yeah, just a matter of time, I think. Hashtag 230 in the comments, baby. Stolten Brothers. Yeah, I mean, picture books, I don't really read to them. I'm just going to be honest with you. And my favourite movie is probably something silly like Step Brothers. Happy Girl. I really like, really like comedy, so thanks, thanks for the answer, but I don't my, really read. My favourite book. I used to read a lot of Wilbur Smith. That was my books that I used Never to read. Never heard of it. Um, and now I've started to read this amazing documentary, um, Lifting Becoming the World's Strongest Brothers by Tom and Luke Stoltman. Don't know you read documentaries. Now available on Amazon and all good bookstores. Also on Audible, um, if you want to listen I to I mean, it. I've read that, but I don't like to promote my own. See, I let Tom speak and then he interrupts me all the time. Movie-wise, um, Hot Rod, I like Hot Rod. Um, have you seen that movie? I've seen Hot Rod. It's so funny. And Step Brothers. I mean, if, let's see, if you're talking okay. CD, sorry, Top Boy, everybody needs to get on some summer house, yeah? Say less. You've got to do what you've got to do. If, and if you haven't watched a movie called Jexy, that's a funny movie. Never heard of that. Anyway. No. That's my thing. Jeez, oh, I've never heard of half these things that you're even... I don't even know if that's true. Yeah, I don't want to answer that because, yeah, there's been 
things in the background and stuff, but I like to keep personal stuff like that hidden and stuff. And yeah, it's not fair for me to answer on behalf of Sinead. It's not fair for people to keep asking that question. So I, as politely as I can, please do not ask us any more questions about when we're going to have babies because, you know, I mean, we've been together for a long time. So I think a lot of people should know that there might there must be some other reasons why we're not having babies right now. So yeah, thank you for the question, but please, hopefully that's the last one of that. Um, not gonna get into it too much because I've spoken so much about this. A legacy that I hope that Tom, myself, Harry, the guys that work with us can hopefully make a difference. You know, Tom's doing that uh, by being a massive advocate of autism. You know, Tom gives hope, hope to so many people. So it's not me, it's not Tom, it's, it's a collective, you know, leave that legacy. It's trying to inspire people to see that even though they've been labeled with something, you know, you can still amount to something more. I um, think Tom's a great advocate of that. Um, I think also if we can try and get men, especially, um, speaking more about their issues, more about their kind of problems and stuff. If we can showcase that, that you know, I, I'm an emotional guy. I'm, I'm show my vulnerabilities. I show my weaknesses. Um, if we can try and showcase that, I think that's really good. I think that things are possible. Um, it doesn't really matter where you're from. You know, we're from a, a very small town in Invergordon, and um, you know, we've been advised not to open a shop in the high street or sell clothing or sell this or do whatever. You know, but we have to stick to what we are passionate about and what we find happiness and find um, solace in. And I think that's what we're trying to do. So, and also that no matter what anybody says, you should do as much cold water as you can. Cause you're worth it. I would say least favorite, but I don't mean that I like overcome it. Just I think trap pool for everyone in Strom, I think because that's the only event you have to exert like max effort for like the longest period of time. You know, you get other event, events like loading and stuff, but you do get that second or two to, uh, you know, like resettle yourself and gather your thoughts. The same with deadlifting for reps and stuff. But I think with crap pull, you have to literally destroy your body for one whole minute and you have to keep pulling that trap bus, whatever it is, over the finish line. If you stop, that that's your event over. So it's, it's that's all about going into that mental game. I think it's the mentalness and when your lactic acid builds in to try and get your mental state to then power through that. So yeah, I think to overcome that, you obviously, you just have to be a bit nuts and you just have to not think about pain and, and enjoy pain. And yeah, it's not really like a week, it's just that's the event that's the hardest to train for as well because you don't always have specific trucks. And it's just going to train knowing you have to train for a truck pulls, yeah, brutal. I think for me, um, any type of holds, forward holds, grip holds, I don't think it's a real test of strength personally. I think it's it needs to be done away with. It's boring to watch for the fans. And it's not like a, a raw strength. It's not like a deadlift or a log press or a squat or running event. Your forward hold hurt you. It's not, it's, it's not a real test of strength. Agreed. So, Agreed. So yeah, get rid of forward holds. Get rid of grips. I think stuff. it's the same with truck. I think with truck pull, I think it has to be heavy. Like when people say, we're in a truck pull today. If it's light, the fittest guy wins, it's not the strongest guy. So when you do a track, I mean, I'm talking about like when I did Wild Straws, Mama did the two monster tracks. That was one of the heaviest trap things I've ever, but it's the only person, the person at one was the strongest person at trap pool. So that, like events like that, where it have to be, you have to be strong, like yeah, grip. It's grip's just, you know, you can cheat it up. You can do stuff. I mean, if you've got the biggest hands, you basically win the grip, don't you? So. <laughs> uh, it's not taking it away from anyone. That no, thinks. but it's just like Mark true. Felix, for example. Mark's yeah. a, an awesome guy, and he's he's got the best grip, probably, or one of the best grips in the world. But I don't think it's a, a pure test of strength for me personally. It's just my opinion. Um, I don't mean that in a like a disrespectful way to anyone. It's just my honest opinion. I don't think it's a it's a pure test of strength. You know, it's especially when you're you know doing a forward hold. And like, it's really hard for the referees to judge on a fair level playing field. So yeah, just, just our opinion. So um, I'd say do There's away with it. There's plenty more events that you can do that makes it, especially for the fans, because a fan doesn't want to sit there watching someone do this. What about you guys? Comment below if you like forward holes or grip stuff. What do you think? Moving stuff for static yeah. strong stuff. 
my biggest one for me is obviously uh, meeting the Rangers team when Steven Gerrard was involved. That was a big moment for myself because I kind of went, I, went, <laughs> I kind of went silent there. I was like, "Well, this is big," but that's. But then I think the biggest one I've ever had was soccer aid. I think soccer aid for me, that's because like, you're literally, you know, you get like football teams and blah blah, but you're literally around Roberto Carlos, Cafu, these guys. Every single person knows who they are, even if you're not really a football fan, you know that they're, you know, World Cup winners and, you know, you've got Patrice Evra, who's massive on social media now, Usain Bolt, you're like, uh, okay, I went from six foot eight to like five foot and was like, I was falling like Shay going, is this real? Is this real? And then obviously being in like WhatsApp groups with them, you're kind of, eh, uh, okay, then this is this. So yeah, I kind of like, even when I first kind of walked into it and seen Berbatov coming with flip flops, I was like, I love Berbatov because, you know, and I was just like, it's funny how you I started with scared. the Rangers team for. Yeah, <laughs> Rangers. I don't know, but I mean, Rangers and like Roberto Carlos. I don't, I don't mean, I mean it in that way, but like, I mean, when you sport our team so much and you actually get to go into like the dressing rooms and see them, you're just like, well, this is, feels weird. You know, Jenner's obviously a legend as well, shaking his hand. And then, yeah, soccer aid as well. And not really, I mean, I'm not doing this in a bad way, but not really anything straw man related because I think I'm so involved in the sport that. You just treat other strong men, even strong men legends, are just kind of people. Like you're part of your sport, they're like family. So you don't really get too starstruck by them all. Even the same with bodyboards and stuff. I mean, Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, they were like, well, I've actually in the same room as these. But I think for me, Stockley, that day at Stockley was oh, mind blowing. Just seeing all these legends in the same room was cool. I'd be happy whatever he wants to do. Um, it's a really good question, but if if my son or you know my child whatever wanted to get involved in strength sports and I would support them 100%. I don't want to force them into anything they want don't want to do. I just want them to if they're happy if I see them being happy with something, I would support that. You know, someone I'm sp speaking to a, a dad a few months ago and he said that he's done horse riding, mountain biking, car racing, football, rugby, and it was whatever their kid or his kid was into at the time. He just wanted to support that and, and be, you know, happy with, with his kid and spend time together. And I think that's what I would like to do. But I would hope that my child would want to do some form of strength stuff, um, just because I know how good it is mentally um, for you and, and how good it is to, to have that routine in your life from a mental point of view. And I think it's very important that 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 is what, you know, um, Kushi and I kind of um, teach our, our child, you know, that routine and doing stuff to better yourself physically, mentally and, emo and emotionally is extremely important. So, yes, if he, he or she becomes the world's strongest man or strongest woman in the world, I would be very happy. Wim Hof, for me. You think side men or something? No, no. Uh, ben Froster, the cycling goalkeeper. His content is funny and I like him. I obviously like football, so that'll be a good one. Uh, I enjoy like Taylor Swift, uh, Beyonce. Uh, I love, love Central Sea and th those kind of things. Taylor Swift is up there with the best so and I like uh, ARD, RD I just like all the songs she puts them on I know them all so yeah all those kind of songs that are pretty cheesy is what I sing to we've been pretty lucky actually to be honest um, I split my finger open my index finger when I was training before um, but normal like I get a bit of patella pain that's usually the worst for me it's not too bad spasms like when I don't stay hydrated I my, I got like, spasms in my leg, um, but I, I'm, we're both quite fortunate in that sense. We haven't had any um, major injuries, um, so yeah, it's not been too too taxing. So not really that big a deal, really. Don't do strong math with them. Um. I think you've got to realise that you're not the same person as well, you know, so like Tom and I, we, even though we're brothers, we're not the same person. We have to be patient with, with each other, even though that's difficult. Um, Very difficult. Isn't it? But I mean, you have to support each other as well, so don't you? It's, 
I think that's that shows show support and love to each other. I think it's just don't don't rush a relationship because I think uh, it's crazy that me and Luke before the gym, like we didn't really, well, because of age group and age difference and stuff, we didn't really, I don't say get on, but like with me being who I was and Luke being his was, we just didn't really uh, brush shoulders. But then you know we found something and the gym just took us to become closer. It was it didn't really like it wasn't forced or anything. It was just we just went to the gym together and left weights, and now we're like irreceptible. So I think, you know, to improve things, I think to improve relationship with brothers, sisters is just to kind of never force it, just make an effort every single day and say you love each other, maybe do something, go for food with them or something, and then all of a sudden it will just start building and building and building. Because if you're just going to go and do, say one brother's into football, one brother's into something else, you're just going to go and do that sport just to try and get close to your brothers or siblings, it's not going to work. So just do your own thing and, and past will come together. I know like, it took us in 18 years and then boom. But it's a good thing now, I think. But yeah. On a beach in the Bahamas. No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> but so, well, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. Uh, five years from now. Jeez, looking into the future is not good, but. Um, seven, I, seven times World's Strongest Man. I want to be. I want to win World's Strongest Man. I want to win that the most titles and then just keep doing competitions. I think it's as well as. I think people don't realise that how much younger or how much of an age gap there is between me and Luke. Like, there's 10 years. Whenever we go, oh, we're brothers, and, like, Luke says, oh, I'm 10 years older than Tom. And he's like, what? Jeez. So, like, for me right now, I'm still, yeah, I've got, we've got business and stuff, but I still want, like, that'll grow in the background. But I'm more still, like, in my career of lifting weights. I think by the time I'm 33, 34, I'll be at my peak as well. So that'll be when I'm at my strongest. So in five years' time, I think I'll just be getting to my, kind of actual peak and, peak and strength. So I want to be breaking maybe the world, like Atlas Stone records again, some other records, but just keep on winning competition and doing what I'm doing and just keep growing this business on the side. But I want to make sure it's balanced and I need to keep the balance right from now to, for five years time as well, because I've learned balance is the most important thing. So obviously keep growing the business like we're doing right now. Then maybe, you know, five years time, Luke might not be doing straw man, he can do that and then I'll keep on going in straw man. So, but yeah, five years time, who knows what happens, but that's my goals. and. Could be I could get a role in Transformers and be Optimus Prime and kill Bumblebee and then everyone will hate me. I think I've got another three years in me. Um, I still feel like I'm progressing. My my deadlift's going up nicely, which is good. So yeah, I don't know, maybe 42, 40, 41, 42. I don't know, or whenever my body stops kind of improving as an athlete, I think that's what I plan. I'll quit and cry my sleep self to sleep every day. I, I mean, uh, right, so, I mean, yeah, we're brothers and stuff, but I think people have to realise as well that I can still I can still lift weights and do competitions without Luke. That's not nothing unlike... That's not what they're asking. It's like, how would you feel emotional? Oh. No, I mean, how would I... I mean, obviously, you have to retire at one point, Don't I care. think. Sorry, I mean, I think in the next... I think if Luke, like, say, three years and he's, you know, his big goals, I think, obviously, doing every single comp every... Like, doing... Some competitions that you didn't have to do is probably pointless. Obviously, when you're older and getting to the end of your career, you have to prioritise the big competitions. And I think, you know, if you see he has three years left or he puts three years on it and he does like Worlds, Arnold's and Rogue, I think those are three massive competitions. And in those three years, give yourself a goal to hit one of them. I mean, if he does that, I and mean, I was able to podium, I'd love to podium with him before he leaves, uh, before he uh, leaves the sport. And that's just, I think that will, will happen. What? Just, you could say when he retires, I'll be happy because he'll have achieved everything. No, but I'm just saying this. Eventually, it will happen, and then He's old. I think, I think you want. I think for me, like as I want, like Luke always says, he wants me to win worlds, win this. But I want to see Luke on a podium at an international stage with me. Like I know Giants Live and stuff's good and that, but like I think we're capable of doing that. But I want, would like to push that and go right. If he's saying to me or you know off, whatever, oh, I've got a year left to do it. Right, let's pick his three competitions, or two, even one competition he wants to do, let's go all out on that and let's podium, and then he finishes that off in the career. That would then, for me, feel like, right, Luke's left his sport and what he wants to do, and what, and then I can take this on to the next level as well. But yeah, I mean, when you retire, you have to feel happy if you know he's achieved what he wants to do, and we've been able to do on a journey together. And just because he's retired doesn't mean he's going to be away from the sport forever. But that's kind of how I see it is, you know, if he has a year left, right, let's pick two competitions and let's fucking kill his body 
off until like that last couple of days, he's literally can't put a trophy above his head. That's a nice answer. I stay motivated because it's the best job in the world for me. You know, getting to compete in front of fans, competing in front of 10,000 plus people sometimes, it's amazing, it feels amazing. I love training, um, getting to train with Tom. I know it bring, has brought us extremely close together. It's our whole life. Um, and I know, I know the good that it's doing me mentally. So um, the more I train, the better I feel. The more I tick those boxes, the better I feel. Um, and then it results in better performances and competitions. Yeah, I mean, gym changed my life, so obviously I'm motivated since 18 years old. But as soon as I stepped in the gym, I own a lot to the gym, so I'm always motivated because I wake up every day going to the place that I love, which is lifting weights and going to the gym. I'm meeting new people every single day, and that's what's so good about this sport is you go to the gym even back here. I'll go to my gym, the Stoughton Strength Centre, every single day, and there'll always be a new person there, and there's always so many motivated people, and that's why you love it, because everybody in the gym never judges you and they just get on with their, their lift if, if it's a first timer or a professional athlete and everyone's in there together like a family and that's the best thing about it. Right guys, that was our question and answers. Hope those answers made sense. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, smile and stay safe. And please don't ever stop ringing that little bell. Ding-a-ling.